Well, my name is Roberta Dow. I work for the Michigan Water Stewardship Program and Michigan State University Extension. Fuel storage is one of the highest risks on farms. There has been confusion regarding what should be done to lower contamination risks and what are the legal requirements for fuel storage. Ben Franklin's saying of an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure is never more correct than with fuel storage. A spill or leak cleanup can be a costly and long process. This leaking underground fuel storage tank caused groundwater contamination and resulted in removal of yards of soil from around and under the tank, installation of five monitoring wells, as well as equipment to remove contamination. The purpose of this video is to help in the understanding of Michigan's on-farm motor vehicle fuel storage regulations and to help in the recognition of tanks, tank equipment, and potential issues. A farm assist risk assessment will help identify petroleum storage risks. To get a free, confidential, on-site risk assessment, call your local conservation district or MSU extension for the name of the nearest water stewardship program technician. The On-Farm Fuel Storage Bulletin, WQ59, will help determine if a site is in compliance with fuel storage regulations. You can find the rules for above-ground fuel storage in Michigan's storage and handling of flammable and combustible liquids and in the National Fire Protection Association's Code for Motor Fuel Dispensing Facilities and Repair Garages and their Combustible Liquids Code. Also, the Michigan Safe Drinking Water Act and the Federal Clean Water Act, 40 CFR Part 112. Underground fuel storage is covered by the flammable and combustible liquids rules and for tanks larger than 1,100 gallons by the Michigan Underground Storage Tank rules. Above ground motor vehicle fuel storage is divided into rules for large tanks greater than 1,100 gallons and for small tanks with capacity of 1,100 gallons or less. Small above ground tanks may be gravity fed or top opening. Here are three 1,000 gallon double walled UL 142 tanks properly spaced three feet apart. Each of these tanks have the required skids lifting the tank off the ground. A normal vent, two emergency vents, a UL listed pump and hose, proper lockable fill opening, an automatic dispenser shutoff and electrical shutoff to prevent tampering. There is also the required impermeable surface for fueling vehicles. You can tell that these are double wall tanks by the two emergency vents. On newer tanks you'll find a tank label. This is an example of the label on an above ground tank for flammable liquids on supports and it's a single walled UL 142 tank. This is an example of an above ground double walled protected tank, a UL 2085 label. This tank can be used within 10 feet of a building due to its higher fire protection rating. The tank must have a permanently attached pump and approved hose for the type fuel on the top opening tank. This Underwriters Laboratories listed hose and pump meet the requirements for their usage. In order to protect the environment and to prevent tampering which might lead to a fire hazard, owners are required to make dispensers inoperable. This can be done with a padlock or by using an electrical shutoff. The pump discharge must be equipped with an anti-siphoning device or the discharge hose have a self-closing nozzle. This provides protection from the liability and risk of environmental contamination, fire hazard, and fuel loss. Self-closing nozzles are required on both gravity-fed and top-opening type tanks. However, a self-closing nozzle such as this doesn't work on gravity flow tanks. 
Tanks need to have a lockable closure on the fill opening. These tanks do not have lockable fill openings. They instead have a screw top on the fill pipe. Normal vents, separate from fill openings, are required. New tanks, put in after 2003, also require an emergency vent. These tanks are designed for the type usage. However, they do not have all the required equipment. They are proper, above-ground tanks, but are missing the required normal vents. These, less than 1,100 gallon capacity tanks, meet all the requirements. Note that they have extra long normal vents. Normal vents need to be long enough that if fumes from them caught fire, the flames would not impinge on and heat the tank. Gravity-fed tanks must have a heat-actuated auto-closing valve adjacent to the tank which will stop flow out of the tank if there is a fire. The discharge must be at the end or the bottom of the tank. Tanks must be properly labeled. Here you see the required labeling in the required 3 inch or larger lettering. Keep 40 feet from buildings. Combustible since the tank holds diesel. It would read flammable if it held gasoline. Keep fire and flame away and the type fuel. A tank needs only one label for the type fuel, but just to make it clear to fuelers, this producer is using both the Department of Transportation number label as well as descriptive word labels indicating it contains a type of diesel fuel. Either type of label can be used. This site shows the importance of the required fueling pad for catching spills while fueling. Now let's look at a tank not designed for the type of use. Here we have underground tanks being used above ground. To identify an above ground tank you can look for several things. Does it have factory installed skids that keep the tank off the ground by about three inches? This tank does not have factory installed skids. You can see that the tank has no skids and it is being propped up on timbers. Notice this tank is in contact with the ground so corrosion is a high risk. The skids keep the tank up off the ground letting air circulate and lower the chance of corrosion. Next look at the end cap weld. Does the end cap overlap the sides or do the sides lap the end? Generally underground tanks have the weld either right at the edge or with an overlap weld on the end. However, this is not always true. Look at the tank surface. Underground tanks commonly had a black bituminous material on the outside of the tank to prevent rusting. Look for labels on the tank. These labels may be located several different places, for instance on the end, on the bottom, side or on the top. On this particular tank it's located on the top and it indicates that it is an underground tank. You don't always find this convincing evidence so you have to rely on other indicators as well. This is not an underground tank used above ground but it is a tank not designed for above ground fuel storage. It's not a UL 142 tank. It has no normal vent and it has added skids. This tank is also not designed for motor vehicle fuel storage. It is a UL80 tank designed for fuel oil which is being used for gasoline. It is also not stably mounted. It does not have a normal vent or an impervious surface for fueling. When assessing above ground tanks, look at the skids. These tanks have various styles of factory installed skids and these do not. An above ground small storage tank site can have up to three tanks per site. They must be separated by at least three feet. If more small tanks are desired, another site may be located a hundred feet away provided that it meets other isolation requirements. Siting tanks requires consideration of the required isolation distances. This shows the isolation distances for small tanks. This diagram is available in the On-Farm Fuel Storage Bulletin WQ59. 
Small underground fuel storage tanks must be designed for underground usage and for the fuel stored. They may be fiberglass, reinforced plastic, steel with cathodic protection, or steel fiberglass reinforced plastic composite. Cathodic protection, that is corrosion protection, must be maintained by inspection. Gas tanks shall be equipped with venting device, which is normally closed except when venting. Tanks shall be anchored to prevent movement during high water. Single-walled tanks without secondary containment may not be installed in delineated wellhead protection areas. Underground tanks must have overfill and spill protection on the fill pipe to prevent release into the soil and water. Installation of a greater than 1100 gallon capacity underground tank requires a plan review by the Department of Environmental Quality before installation, followed by registration with the DEQ. Installation of an above ground large greater than 1100 gallon capacity tank also requires a plan review with registration and an annual fee. Secondary containment is required. It may be achieved using a double walled tank or a dike around the tank. For meat verification of large, greater than 1100 gallon above ground tanks, one is required to have registration and display the proof of registration, have spill protection installed and maintained on the fill pipe, have emergency control disconnect located 20 to 100 feet from the dispensing area and have the tank tested and be leak free. The Michigan Agriculture Environmental Assurance Program, better known as MEEP, requirements for fuel storage are identified in the Farm Assist Bulletin. Hi Beth, thanks for coming over. I know that you've had a pharmacist done and that with this pharmacist, of course, fuel storage was identified as one of the high-risk activities. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that we'd talk about maybe some of the things that you're considering for this particular site. We really appreciated having the pharmacist done on the farm. Um, we saw a lot of things that we were doing right and some that we were doing wrong. The fuel storage is definitely something we plan on changing in the future. Um, it opened our eyes, the pharmacist did, to a lot of things that we were not complying with and, and that we would like to start working towards meat verification. 